Right. Welcome back to General Services Administration's taking comments on a new solicitation for drones and robotics called the Astro Master Contract. The approach of the contract fulfills a promise the commissioner of GSA, Emily Murphy, made at her confirmation hearing almost three years ago. Alan Thomas is chief operating officer at IntelliBridge. He's former commissioner of the Federal Acquisition Service, the General Services Administration. Alan, welcome. It's good to see you again. Uh, Emily Murphy, according to Federal News Network, said this at that confirmation hearing. We're trying to make sure GSA's contracting officers and our policies support really vigorous competition at the task order level because that's the amount we are actually going to spend. So we're gonna, we want to get the best deal there, the most competition we can there. What did she mean when she said that, Alan? So Francis, she's really talking about the difference between a master contract. So if you think of the, uh, the GSA schedule, for example, right? It's a master contract and there may be pricing established at the master contract level. And then under the master contract, there are actually orders, right? And that's where real competition happens. That's when customers come forward with specific requirements around what they want, what sort of outcomes they want to achieve. And when there's competition, right, that's where industry really comes and sharpens their pencil and, uh, and offer, offers actual, uh, actual prices, if you will, right? So the goal really is to get competition focused at the order level and perhaps not spend so much time and effort trying to determine pricing at the master contract level. What did, had to happen, and I imagine some of this happened under your jurisdiction at, at the Federal Acquisition Service, what had to happen to get from where we were, where we've been for a long time, to where we're headed now? So there was a, there was a provision in the NDAA, I think it was a 2019 NDAA. So GSA's had this, and the civilian side of the government's had this authority for about uh, two years. It was, I think, Section 876 in the NDAA, which, um, which is called unpriced services, right? And essentially allows uh, civilian agencies, and you see GSA with the, with the rulemaking and the comment that's come out actually starting to put this into practice, it allows them to potentially have unpriced master contracts and then allow the, the pricing to happen at the, uh, at the task order level. It's a big win, right? It's a pretty significant burden reduction from an industry standpoint. Um, and it also really makes sense from a, you know, from an agency standpoint as well, right? It's where a contracting officer should focus their time is when there's a real requirement or a real order, right? And not spend a lot of time trying to negotiate prices that uh, in some sense are a little bit fiction at the, at, at the master level. Do you think there's any significance to the type of contract that this is, that it's, or, or you know, for what it's a contract for, for uh, robotics and drones, or did it just, do you think it was just the next one that was coming along? I think it was, I think it was the next one that was coming along. I think the team, the, the FedSIM team that's putting out Astro, right, is pretty creative, right? There are a number of players there that were instrumental in putting uh, the Oasis contract in place. So they sort of broke new ground there in terms of that self-scoring uh, mechanism that's become pretty popular for you know for other types of, of government-wide contracts. So I think you know it it made sense to do it here because you've got a pretty good creative team in place. I also think you know it's been almost two years since this authority was granted in the NDAA, so it's time to really put it into place. For me, the big news is not so much what they're doing on Astro. I think that's important, but really. Uh, the, the comment on rulemaking they put out where they're potentially going to do this on the schedules program, right? That's a $31 billion a year program that just about every big industry player in, in this town holds. Um, it's a, that's potentially a very big change and, and, a, and a, you know, could really be, really be a boom for, uh, for industry. Well, and that's where I wanted to go next is uh, Emily tells uh, Jason Miller, Federal News Network, in this report, this is, we're, we're basically, I'm paraphrasing, but it, she's essentially saying we're going to try this on Astro and she anticipates seeing this in the future. This is not just a test. It sounds like this is the direction that she and I imagine you wanted to take the agency much more broadly. A absolutely, right? So I, I would agree. It's sort of a crawl, walk, run, right? Where Astro might be the, might be the crawl. But as I said, the big, the big play is, uh, is around schedules. Um, now look, this has happened a little bit in DOD, right? So contracts like Seaport E or NetSense uh, have done this. They, they've had the authority over there uh, a little bit longer. But if you do it you in the schedules program, it's a really big deal. And I think what will be important to see is in the, uh, in the rulemaking and in how they implement it is, do they do it just for time and materials and labor hour contracts or, do they, or orders, or do they do it also for fixed price orders? So about two thirds of the orders, uh, services orders that go through schedule are fixed price, right? So that in my mind would be really the area 
Um, that would be, uh, in some sense, a, a little bit of a revolution as we did it for fixed price. And it would allow, I think it would solve a, n a number of problems, right? So when you think about some sort of high-end strategy firms that want to come in and offer their services to top leaders in government, you know, they price sometimes in a, in a fixed price way that's a little hard for government to get their arms around. The ability to sort of get them on schedule in an unpriced way and then have competition at the task order level might, might solve that problem and allow those firms to get, uh, to get access to government customers and allow government customers to get access to that expertise. About a minute left, Alan. What should we watch when it comes to the execution of this? The, either the comments on Astro, the way the contract's deployed, um, what, what should we watch, what comes next, any of that? So I, as I said, I think the big, in my mind, the big question is, are, are they gonna do it also for, uh, are they gonna do it on schedule, which it looks like they are, and are they gonna do it for, uh, for firm fixed price? Uh, orders. I think that's uh, you know I think that's really important. And does does this spread right? Does the fact that GSA on the civilian side is sort of stepping out and, and taking advantage of this authority does it spread? So when you have agency level IDIQs, do do other civilian agencies who are putting um, IDIQs in place do they uh, do they also do it in an unpriced way? It's, it you know it really is from from a contracting officer standpoint. It doesn't make sense to spend a lot of time negotiating price at that master contract level and, and you know many in the industry who've been around for a while know right that you build the rate card and there are a number of throwaway rates uh in there it's a it's a it's a little bit of a game that frankly is a time waster for both industry and for government everybody gets down to brass tacks when it uh, when you get to the order level when the requirements specified and that's really where it makes sense for everyone to focus their effort on making sure the government gets the best price to meet their requirement alan thomas thanks as always great to see you